Chapter 7 Captain Cooks Builds a Nest Very reluctantly, Jenny and Bill had to leave Captain Cook and go to school. Mrs. Popper was busy with the in the kitchen, rather belatedly doing the breakfast dishes, and while she dimly realized that the penguin was going in and out of the refrigerator pretty frequently, she thought nothing of it at first. Meanwhile, Mr. Popper had abandoned his telephoning and was now busy shaving and making himself neat in honor of being the owner of such a splendid bird as Captain Cook. But the penguin, though thus neglected for the moment, was by no mean idle, either. With the unusual excitement, and having to go to the market earlier than usual, Mrs. Popper had not yet got around to straightening the house. She was an excellent housekeeper still, with two children, like Jenny and Bill, and a husband with such untidy ways, there is no denying the fact that she had to pick up the place rather frequently. Captain Cook was now attending to the picking up. Into the corners of every room he prowled and poked and pecked with the busiest thoroughness. Into every closet he stared with his white circle eyes. Under and behind all the furniture he crowded his plump figure with little subdued cries of curiosity, surprise and pleasure. And each time he found what he seemed to be looking for, he picked it up in the back end of his red beak and carried it, waddling proudly on his white pink feet, into the kitchen and into the icebox. At last it occurred to Mrs. Popper to wonder what on earth the busy bird was up to. When she looked, she couldn't only scream to Mr. Popper to come quickly and see what Captain Cook had done now. Mr. Popper himself looked rather remarkable, as Mrs. Popper noticed later, joining her in staring with astonish astonishment into the refrigerator. Captain Cook came up to and helped them look. Ork, ork, he said with triumph. Mrs. Popper laughed and Mr. Popper gasped as they saw the results of Captain Cook's trips through the house. Two spools of thread, one white chest bishop, and six parts of a jigsaw puzzle, a teaspoon and a closed box of safety matches, a radish, two pennies, a nickel, and a golf ball, two pencil stubs, one bent playing card, and a small ashtray, five air pins, an olive, two dominoes, and a sock, a nail file, four buttons of various size, a telephone slug, seven marbles, and a tiny doll's hair, five checker pieces, a bit of graham cracker, a partial teacup, and an eraser a door key, a button hook, and a crumbled piece of tin foil, half of a very old lemon, the head of a china doll, Mr. Popper's pipe, and a ginger hell cap, an ink bottle cork, two screws, and a belt buckle, six beads from a child's necklace, five building blocks, a darning egg, a bone, a small harmonica, and a partly consumed lollipop, two toothpaste lids, and a small red notebook. I guess this is what you call the rookery, said Mr. Popper only he couldn't find any stones to build his nest with. Well, said Mrs. Popper, those penguins may have heaven's way uh, at the South Pole, but I declare I think this one is going to be quite a help around the house. Ork, said Captain Cook, strut, uh, and strutting into the living room, he knocked over the best lamp. I think, Papa, said Mrs. Popper, that you had better take Captain Cook outside for a little exercise. Good gracious, but you're all dressed up, why? You look almost like a, a, a penguin yourself. Mr. Popper had smoothed down his hair and shaved off his whiskers. Never again would Mrs. Popper have to reproach him for looking as wild as a lion. He had put on a white shirt and a white tie and white flannel trousers and a pair of bright tan oxblood shoes. He had got out of the satyr chest his old black evening tailcoat that he had been married in and versed it carefully and put it on, too. He did indeed look a little like a penguin. He turned and strutted like one now, for Mrs. Popper. But he did not forget his duty to Captain Cook. Can I have a few yards of clothesline, please, Mama? asked Mr. Popper. 